<sighs> Hello, Shrieker here. Welcome back to Montfield Math, and today we'll take a look at triangles. <sighs> you probably heard of triangles, you probably have an idea of what they are. A triangle is basically three straight line segments that connect at three separate points. Like, a, a triangle can be this, a triangle can be this, a triangle can even be something like that. As long as all the points are the same, or as long as all the points are straight, then uh, the resulting figure is a triangle. All of these are triangles. Okay. Now that we clarified what a triangle is, we can immediately find the formula for a triangle's perimeter because it's easy. The perimeter of um, the perimeter of any figure other than a circle is all of its side lengths combined, like this side length plus this side length, plus this side length. And since there are no fancy formulas to represent the side lengths for a triangle, you could just call it L1 plus L2 plus L3 is the, per is the formula for the perimeter of a triangle. Basically, the three side lengths Add it up, make the tri make the perimeter of a triangle. Okay. <sighs> now that covered, let's get into the types of triangles. First, we have to familiarize <sighs> with the concept of degrees. Okay. So a triangle can have any degree from right above zero, the angle in a triangle can have any degree from right above zero to right uh, below 180. So 180 degrees is like basically a half circle. So it cannot be a half circle or else it will not be a triangle. However, um, the degrees in a triangle can be less than 180. Okay, so there are three types of triangles that are classified based on um, uh, all three angles' degrees. So there are three kinds of angles, obtuse angles, which have... Um, which are bigger than 90 degrees. So 90 degrees is so if 180 degrees is like a straight line, then 90 degrees is just half of that. This is 90 degrees. It's half of a straight line. It basically looks like a perfect corner of a rectangle. That's basically what 90 degrees is. Half of 180 degrees. Half of a semicircle, kind of the angle that you would use for a quarter circle. 90 degrees is usually represented with a box. So when we're talking about an obtuse triangle or a triangle that has an angle of more than 180 degrees, we mean that the, this is 90 degrees, this is 0 degrees, and from here onwards is bigger than 90 degrees. So. It is now an obtuse angle. If we connect the two points, we make an obtuse triangle. Since it's now a triangle and one of the angles is obtuse. Uh, next, we have the right triangle. Which has one right angle. Uh, which is, uh, if a triangle has one angle that's 90 degrees, then it's a right triangle.
Oh, and one of the angles can't be bigger. Uh, one of the angles has to be 90. If all three of the angles are like 89.99999 or 90.00001, then it still won't be a right triangle, although it'll be close. Oh, and right triangles are special. We'll focus on them a little later. Okay. But on to the acute triangle. Now, the acute triangle is slightly different in which all three of the angles all three of the angles all three of the angles have to be greater than 0 but less than 90 usually it can't be um uh, less than 0 ever so it just, let's just say less than 90 degrees of three angles have to be less than 90 degrees for a Q angle. For a right angle, for, I'm sorry, a acute triangle. For a right triangle, one of the angles has to be 90 degrees. One angles equals 90 degrees. And for right triangle and for uh, obtuse triangle assume that's straight okay so for an obtuse triangle one angle has to be greater than 90 degrees but less than 180 degrees so 90 degrees not 9 90 okay I'll give you a couple seconds for you to write this down Okay, now let's move on to another variety of classification for triangles. And that's by how many side lengths are the same. Let's start off with equilateral triangles, where each side is 60 degrees, where each side is, um, where each side length is the same side length as all the other side lengths. So like, if one of the side lengths was 1, then all the other side lengths would be 1. So the triangle would be equilateral. Equilateral means all three of the side lengths are equal. We write equality by putting dashes through it, meaning that this is the same as this, which is the same as this. Okay, so that's e equilateral triangle. I'll just call triangle as a triangle shape. Okay, so now isosceles triangles. Uh, didn't mean to draw a curve. Isosceles triangles. What isosceles triangles are is if two of isosceles triangle. It's if at least two of the angles are equilateral. Okay, so equilateral triangle, three side lengths. I'll call side lengths as the line segment symbol and three side lengths. Oh, actually I'll just call it an L. Three side lengths are congruent, or equivalent, or the same. Okay, so for isosceles triangles, at least two. It can also be three. So equilateral triangles are also isosceles triangles. So at least... It, um, a triangle is an isosceles if at least two 
side lengths are the same length. And finally we turn to our last type, which is um, none of the sides are the same length. In which case we don't do any dashes at all because none of these side lengths are the same as the other. No side lengths are the same. Okay, so that's good. Now that we learned how to classify all these triangles, let's clarify the terms for triangles. Okay, so let's pick a random triangle or an arbitrary triangle. Assume this is a triangle. Okay, actually let's use this as a better example. Okay, so the base is the, bot is the bottom length, or the length shown on the bottom. So that's B, capital B for base, and the height for acute triangles, uh, it's actually in the triangle. I'll show you what I mean. Height is this for an acute triangle, say. And this is the base. For a right triangle, the second leg, or the second length that's not the biggest length, is the height. And for the obtuse triangle, the base is still on the bottom, but the height is now outside of the triangle. Okay, so the reason I'm trying to clarify with base and height is because the area of a triangle requires on knowing what the base and height are. So the area of the triangle is the base times the height divided by 2. Why divided by 2, you ask? Because a base times the height would mean, for a right triangle, would mean a square. So the base times the height is um, this the length of the square, which is two of the triangles. So one of the triangles is the base times the height divided by 2. Okay, so <clears throat> now that we clarify the area, let's move on to special cases of right triangles. I want to introduce a new complicated formula that's really, really useful for right triangles. So, uh, really important, pay attention. So, if we call one of the legs, for a right triangle, the shorter lengths are called legs. You know it's a right triangle when there's a box written, drawn at the um, right angle of the right triangle. These are called legs, so, so let's call this a leg. Wait. leg, leg, and the hypotenuse has the fancy term H. Or, no, I mean H is the fancy term hypotenuse. 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 Okay. So, Pythagorean, so Pythagoras was a mathematician and created one of the most 
well-known triangle formulas called the Pythagorean theorem, which means Pythagorean Pythagorean. <clears throat> it's basically his formula. Okay, in this case, so um, it's called a squared plus b squared equals c squared. A and B are each of these legs, so these legs are also referred to sometimes as A and B, and the hypotenuse is always C. So, if you want to find the hypotenuse and you know the two legs of a right triangle, you can simply say that the A squared, like this leg squared plus this leg squared or B squared, equals the hypotenuse squared or C squared. Show you what I mean with the most classic example, 3, 4, and 5. Okay, so 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. So 3 squared is 3 times 3, which is 9. 4 squared is 4 times 4, which is 16, and 5 squared is 5 times 5, which is 25. And indeed, 9 plus 16 equals 25, so 3, 4, 5 is a right triangle. But, like, not all side lengths make right triangles. Like, if you want to do 1 and 1 and 2, The angle is not right because 1 squared plus 1 squared is 1 plus 1. And that is not 2 squared, which is 4. Therefore, 1 plus 1 is not 2. And No, 1 squared plus 1 squared is not 2 squared. Okay. Um, so, before um, I finish the episode, I just want to give you a list of famous Pythagorean triples, which is basically like 3, 4, and 5, in which um, you get leg-leg hypotenuse ratios that fit for right triangles and make the formula work. Okay, so 3, 4, 5, what I showed you, and after that is um, 5, 12, 13, 7, 24, 25, and um, 9, 40, 41. Okay, <clears throat> these are some formulas. Oh, also, I missed one between 7 and 9. There's also 8, 15, 17. Okay, so. I'll give you time, a little time to copy, pause the video and copy. Okay. <clears throat> I hope you enjoyed Introduction to Triangles. Like, comment, and subscribe to Montville Math. Have a good day.